everyone. My name is Christiana Manzacco, and I'm the director, director of government marketing with Deal Room. Can you hear me okay? Yeah? Okay, great. Um, so today we're going to have a conversation about as Glasgow's ecosystem matures, how can all the different facets of the ecosystem from innovators to investors, corporates, and the public sector all work together and collaborate in order to secure the future growth of our startup and scale up economy here. So before we actually get into the meat of this panel, and we have three experts joining us from all across the ecosystem, I'd just like to deliver some insights from Deal Room on the topic of Glasgow's emerging growth um, and also just talking about, in general, emerging ecosystems across Europe. Great. So we know that Glasgow offers vast potential for businesses to tap into, including access to talent, access to creative communities, scientific and technology communities. All these are really powerful ingredients that have made it into an emerging ecosystem to take note of. And if we look across Europe, we can see that there's truly emerging ecosystems all across the continent um, who have come on the scene over just the last year. So these are locations not like London, for instance, but smaller ecosystems that you've probably never heard of, some of, um, like Ulu, Finland, um, Kilkenny, Ireland, I'm sure you've probably heard of. Um, but I think it just goes to show when we look at these smaller, um, you know, kind of more fringe tech hubs that really startups don't have to be based in New York or Silicon Valley anymore. Um, really, talent can exist anywhere and startups can, sorry, can scale um, a very foundationally strong business almost anywhere. So that's very exciting to us at Deal Room. Um, beyond just looking at the, the overall established hubs, to look at the emerging hubs as well. So when we look at these emerging hubs, we can see that there's a very exciting trend, which is that they're actually growing at a much faster rate than the legacy um, incumbent hubs like London or New York, for instance. So when we look at the overall enterprise value of the startups that make up these ecosystems, we can see that the change that they have year over year is that much greater. So the top three hubs that we're looking at here um, would be Athens, Greece, the Ulu region in Finland, and then third, Glasgow city region. So even though they aren't at the same level yet of maturity as some of these more established hubs, um, they are growing very quickly and they're catching up. So watch out. And indeed, Glasgow startups have been very successful in attracting venture capital investment. Uh, we can see that, of course, 2021 was a fabulous record-breaking year. If we look at 2022, uh, we are on track for another very significant year in terms of venture capital investment that's flowed into local startups. Um, it will still likely eclipse the performance of 2020, uh, with that being said, it's unlikely to reach 2021's frenzied heights, um, but I mean, that's also a trend that is very well aligned with the rest of Europe and what we're seeing right now. And on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, you can see the top rounds raised since 2021 by some of your very own companies active here. So congratulations to those startups and scale-ups. And if we dive a little deeper into the underlying industries um, that have made up the bulk of this venture capital investment, we can see that since 2018, the biotech and pharmaceuticals industry, which also includes food, by the way, food tech, um, has been by far the most well-funded. And so that's 75.8 million pounds that has been raised since 2018. Um, and then we have energy and health tech following behind and the rest spread across a wide, diverse um, list of different sectors and industries. And so when we think about the underlying startups that are really powering that growth, as we said, it's really biotech and pharmaceutical startups. And we can see here uh, the performance of university spin-outs, most of which 
are biotech um, and how they really are drivers of value creation in this local ecosystem. And we can also see the three main universities, of course, that are accountable for this growth. Um, and if we think about some of the underlying factors that have led to this huge increase in performance, so going from um, looking between 2016 and 2022, we can see that the overall enterprise value of these university spinouts has actually increased by 3.2 times, which is very significant. Um, and there's quite a few factors that would be accountable for this, and I look forward to discussing it more with the panelists that we have here. Um, but if we think about the, the strength of those university institutions, the programming that they've established to support these scale-out spin-outs and scale-up companies, um, and then also just the investment into R&D funding um, and the research centers of excellence. These are all really incredible factors that Glasgow has going for it in supporting its startups. So that brings us to the panel we have at hand here. Um, so looking today at Glasgow, growth city for ambitious startups and scale-ups. So without further ado, I'd like to invite our panelists to the stage. Come and join me on the couch. Great, yes, join me in welcoming them. Thank you. It's gonna be cozy on the couch, yeah. <laughs> Great, so thanks again for joining us and thanks to our three expert panelists for coming today. Um, so who do we have here today? With us, we have Jamie Clyde, Innovation Services Director with Bruntwood SciTech. Jamie is responsible for provision of innovation services across Bruntwood SciTech's network. In addition, Jamie has regional responsibility for the Innovation Birmingham campus and Melbourne Science Park near Cambridge. His background in innovation spans over 25 years and he has set up over a dozen new ventures in tech, property, and professional services, working internationally with entrepreneurs in a range of corporates, including Virgin and EDF Energy. Two of these companies achieved exits with a 10 times investment return. We also have with us Robert Keenan, Executive Director in the Strategic Programs and Planning Function of Enterprise Technology and Services with Morgan Stanley. That's a mouthful, Robert. <laughs> Robert has been at Morgan Stanley for over 23 years and has held various positions in technology transformation and management. Robert is also a member of the Glasgow Technology Management Committee and an enthusiastic supporter of the Scottish technology ecosystem. And last but not least, we have Alan Cannon, who is co-founder and CEO of Space Tech Scale-Up, Crucial, where he is responsible for business growth and strategy. With a background in tech and business development, Alan was previously head of missions at Clyde Space and is now working to make digital transformation easier for all, anywhere on earth. Alan also is also a keen advocate for the next generation of entrepreneurs and tech leaders and currently sits on the board of Code Clan, who we've heard about already today, I know, um, a digital bootcamp accelerator. Now, just a quick note about Crucial, because where would we be if we did not plug our local startups? Uh, Crucial is a cutting-edge satellite communication scale-up that provides technology to connect enterprises to mission-critical data from anywhere on Earth. Crucial's technology uses both satellite and cellular communications to transmit data, automatically switching between the two, depending on which is available, and reducing the risk of downtime. Thank you so much for coming here today. Okay, so let's get into the discussion. So Glasgow is ranked as one of the UK's top three fastest growing tech hubs, yet it still is an emerging tech ecosystem. What would each of you like the world to know about Glasgow's tech ecosystem? Okay, I'm happy to start that. Um, so having been in this ecosystem for some time and watched, watched it build and grow, um, it really, it starts with talent, right? Because um, in terms of the academic sector, there's a lot of traditional sources of talent coming out into this ecosystem, high concentration of technology and STEM graduates. But also with that, we've started to develop other methods for people coming in, whether it's um, upskilling, reskilling, di other diverse sources of talent coming from grassroots. So talent's number one. 
The other thing that's important for me to say in a large corporate is, you know, over a couple of decades, um, I've watched how much this is built, and this this is doesn't just go for Morgan Stanley, this also goes for direct competitors and also professional services firms. They have scaled, invested, and if anything, that acceleration has accelerated again over the last, say, four or five years. And that in some ways kind of matches accommodative um, financing that's coming from and being directed from both governments. Fantastic. Um, so as an as a ex-Strathclyder um, um, who went to university here in Glasgow, moved away for 10 years and then came back to the, to the city to work for one of the Scotland's first um, space companies, um, I've been able to witness the city go through inc incredible um, you know, transformation um, as a, you know, starting to develop, um, firstly, from my perspective, um, space tech ecosystem. Um, so we're now on to second and third generation companies that have essentially spun out from the number of space tech companies that started here in, here in Glasgow. Um, but, but Glasgow has um, a number of ecosystems that exist um, in, in various different sectors. Um, you mentioned some of them al already. Um, but what, what you get to see is that there's lots of these very interesting businesses that are starting up. Um, there, you know, we've got an incredible talent pool um, um, that's coming out of the universities. Incredible number of, of, of students that are graduating every year um, and, and staying in Glasgow and in the, in the local ecosystem. Um, I also think that you know, um, Glasgow's really well linked as well. So for example, now we can travel over to Edinburgh in like 40 minutes. Um, which means that actually the whole central belt can act as one larger ecosystem. So there's a lot going for Glasgow. Um, I think there's a lot of challenges that we have to develop it from a, an immature ecosystem into a mature ecosystem, um, and I'm sure we'll come on to that. Okay. So, uh, hello. Um, <coughs> I'm very much new to the ecosystem. We, we, um, we landed, if you like, in, in Glasgow just a few months ago. Um, and uh, <coughs> our current footprint is, is centered really around the Midlands and, and uh, uh, the north of England. Uh, so I really speak you know, as uh, the, the receiving end of your question as saying, as, as a newbie and, and having been welcomed here uh, in an incredible way in the last few months uh, with our colleagues, uh, I think we should be telling the world that, that Glasgow is, is open and, and very welcoming towards whether it's investors, uh, founders, talent looking for new challenges because I think as you outlined in your slides beautifully um, that this is a, a point in time in the development um, of the ecosystem where it's exciting it's, it's possible to shape it it's not mature it's maturing and, and therefore coming into the city uh, is, is really exciting well that's great perspective to have and welcome to Glasgow <laughs> um, so we touched upon some of these elements a little bit but what do we think are the core elements that differentiate Glasgow from other emerging tech hubs? If we can just name a couple. So for me, actually, I would just... Sorry, I, I would just double down on what Alan started talking about, about adjacency between um, sectors, so, and, and actually scale, because although um, we aspire to grow, we're also small but easily navigated at the moment, and with that comes um, connectivity, so you get the ability to navigate locally, hopefully facilitated by you know, government, local government and similar bodies. But with that, you have, we've got space tech, sev tech, biotech, fintech, um, you put a tech suffix in pretty much anything. And uh, what it really tells you is that we've got thriving industry and a lot of accidents waiting to happen in innovation. I love that, thank you. Now, when it comes to the growing number of startups that we have in Glasgow and helping them scale, what would you say are our core challenges? Um, I'll, I'll take this one. Um, I think um, we have a number of, of, of challenges. I think Gla uh, Glasgow and Scotland in general is, is actually very good at creating startups, early stage startups. We've got a very um, supportive ecosystem through the likes of uh, the universities, um, and also Scottish Enterprise, um, um, various other organisations that can, you know, help in the very early stages of taking a, a concept, an idea, taking a founder, educating that founder, um, and then, you know, um, starting to grow. 
um, where we where we don't have the this this the real um, the real um, talent at this point is actually taking those startups who have essentially um, got some early stage traction um, and, and is actually you know giving them the the tools to, to scale their business and become you know la much larger businesses so there's a couple of things which which I feel um, very strongly about is actually um, um, the capital um, that's available to early stage um, startups um, we we have a very good angel network here in in, in, in Scotland and um, but we have a severe lack of, of VCS um, here so um, one of the things that I think we need to do within within Scotland and, and Glasgow is, is attract VCS here and obviously as more and more startups become successful and start to break out that will automatically attract new more mature capital into the into the ecosystem um, I also think that you know there's 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 a fantastic talent pool here um, and um, I think you know more education more areas um, you know where we can you can bring in experienced founders into the ecosystem and help um, educate our, our founders to know what good and great looks like um, I think that's that's important especially with an immature ecosystem that hasn't had too many breakout companies you know three unicorns um, um, in Scotland um, so I think that's really important um, um, but I also think that um, there's a need for us to organize and um, learn from each other as well. So creating environments where we can bring um, startups together to learn from each other is extremely important. And it's great to see um, you know, the, the different um, uh, projects that are ongoing at the moment uh, through the tech scalers, um, Bruntwood, uh, SciTech, et cetera, to, to create um, kind of uh, hubs essentially to start to, to, to do that education piece. So a similar exercise and a question was asked in Cambridge a few weeks ago, um, and, and the answer was um, we were discussing really around five different dimensions, and I think um, you've covered a, a few of them already, which is great. Um, just to add to a, a couple of points, I think um, there will be a need for more capital, and the, and the model that seems to be very successful <coughs> in other cities is um, a significant local fund that's linked to the university or universities, um, that, that drives not only spin-out funding, but also more broader funding and, and, um, and private startups. Uh, and, and having that anchor fund then attracts, cr through crowdsourcing, uh, you know, far greater uh, investment pool. Um, networks, I think, is a really key piece, and having really strong networks. Um, looking at places like Cambridge, where they just built networks themselves over, over years. Uh, in other cities, I think it has to be manufactured more. They don't necessarily evolve in the same way and I know I think there's initiatives going on here to, to try and to drive that um, infrastructure and planning of infrastructure is really important um, making sure that there's enough space as things take off and and, and companies grow having that not just startup space but, but having space ready for uh, for grow, uh, growth businesses as, as they as they scale and the final one uh, is around data and uh, there are obviously um, in other parts of Scotland, you know, there's initiatives going on around um, access to data. And the great thing about data is it can be virtual. So it's, it's having a response to that, it not necessarily having our own data here, but having access to data, uh, I think is, is critical. Um, so just, you know, a few things on, on top of I think great points you made. And I know that Invest Glasgow has a very exciting launch coming up soon that has to do with ecosystem data and making it available to all. So I'll just plant the seed for that there. More coming soon. Um, <laughs> but um, Robert, was there anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, really, the only thing that we want to make sure is um, we're not complacent about the um, size of the talent gap because as, as much as talent is a strength here, there is also still a gap between supply and demand. And it only um, widened with post-pandemic because as more and more companies transition to digital business models, then that just puts further pressure, inflation on, on rates, and it just sometimes makes it harder for the startups to compete. And coming from a large company, like generally speaking, we've been able to go out and get the talent we needed just about, but we know that not everybody's in exactly that position, and we need to continue working to expand the funnel coming into this industry to support all of us. I completely agree. 
And I just wanted to follow up with something that Alan said, actually. So, Alan, I know that you have looked internationally to um, gain expertise for your company, to gain access to other networks, and you talked about some of the tools that scale-ups need in order to look internationally. Can you touch a little bit more on what are some of those tools that would actually be useful to you as a scale-up in looking beyond Glasgow? I think um, the rather than maybe tools, I think it's um, one of the key things that um, startups um, in a kind of local ecosystem um, like Glasgow and, and, and maybe like Scotland as well is that um, to encourage um, founders um, to go and explore other ecosystems um, and, and, and become a little bit more ambitious in terms of what they're trying to do um, because the world's a very connected place um, these days, so um, it's easy to easy to go and and, and and you know design a company that that is global um, and and over, you know, obviously the big opportunities are global. So um, from my from my personal experience, it's been um, you know I've learned so much by going and visiting the likes of Silicon Valley, um, um, going down to even just going down to London and, and seeing the tech scene there, um, but really. Trying to, to to realize that you know there's certain things that happen in the in these ecosystems. Um, the, the 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 people are not necessarily brighter. Um, the ideas aren't necessarily better. Um, um, they're just mature ecosystems, and because they're mature ecosystems, the founders are able to to take more risk, um, so they can raise more capital. Um, they've got better talent that they can access, who have built businesses previously. Um, um, so, in an immature um, tech ecosystem that is maturing, um, the founders have to have to be brave and go out and experience that, but then bring that back and, and, and really look to, to, to complement your teams with people who have done it before on an international scale. So, I think that's that would be my kind of big advice to founders out there. Thanks for that. Okay, so this is a question for Jamie. So coming from another ecosystem, you have a very interesting, fresh perspective to provide, um, especially with the experience you've gathered from working in other ecosystems across the country. So how do the challenges that are facing Glasgow startups today compare to other ecosystems? So just doing a quick sort of tour around, around the UK, um, Glasgow's quite often compared, there's some interesting comparisons with Manchester, um, and Manchester's um, come also from an industrial heritage, quite a long way from London, um, and is sort of number two in England in, in terms of <coughs> the tech scene. Um, and I think the success of, of Manchester has driven really heavily over the, over the last 10 years with, a, with strong leadership, um, uh, both at uh, combined authority level and, and effective uh, interworking between city council and, and the combined authority. Uh, and working very closely with the NHS and with private sector partners. Um, so we've had a, um, a partnership, uh, an equity partnership with um, the City Council, the two universities, and the NHS that's nearly 10 years old now. And there are you know, plenty of examples of, of that type of close interworking um, at, a, at a city level uh, there. Um, they've recently formed the Northern Gritstone uh, Fund, which is uh, spanning um, Leeds, Sheffield, and Manchester uh, to provide that level of support in, in terms of capital funding for spin outs and, and startups. Um, similar to OSE and, and CIC in Cambridge and, and Oxford. Um, so I, I think you know, the Manchester C um, ecosystem is, is mature. Um, and an interesting comparison with Manchester and Birmingham uh, Birmingham is, is, is coming of an age, um, had the Commonwealth Games uh, earlier in the summer. Um, and it's at a point now, it's, it's certainly the England's uh, fastest growing tech scene. Um, and again, with the strong leadership of Andy, Andy Street, um, is, is coming together. It's challenge being the West Midlands, um, that you've got loads of different cities within the West Midlands, uh, all, and different universities all vying uh, and competing. And, and I think what we're seeing now is a critical mass in terms of maturity the ecosystem where these different cities, different universities are coming together uh, and pulling together. Um, and, and we're now actually seeing some, some excellent growth there. Um, Leeds and the, and the east of England is quite interesting. So whereas 
The west of England has, has been driven quite heavily by the public sector. Um, the east of England, less so. Um, so the, you know, Leeds, for example, six of a very successful uh, tech cluster driven out of um, uh, legal tech, professional services tech, and, and data. Um, but really through private sector. And Cambridge as well, similar story there. And the public sector has really dragged, us actually, the, 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 the um, progression to the point now with population growth of 30% in 20 years, the infrastructure is creaking and holding the, um, uh, the market back. So very different challenges around the UK. And, and, uh, and I think in terms of, of learning, it, it all comes back to the importance of public and private sector partnership, which I think you're going to come on to. Amazing. Thank you so much for that perspective. That's very valuable, I'm sure, for the audience and, and gives me some good perspective as well in uh, a geography that I'm not super familiar with. <laughs> as you may hear, I am not from here. Um, so thank you very much for that. So on the topic of the public sector, um, so we have a really good diverse mix of folks in the room here from corporates to founders, service providers. Um, what role do you each believe that public-private collaborations play in activating the ecosystem? Yeah, I'll, I'll take this one. Um, um, from our perspective, we've, we've benefited from, from fantastic support from, um, from Scottish Enterprise, um, who helped us um, get started through grants, um, which allowed us to, to, to start to build our, our technology. So, um, in the very early stages of our business, that allowed us to, to take risk, to develop our product, um, to mature the business. Um, we, we continued down that track in terms of um, when we were able to attract um, uh, our, our kind of lead investor from the, from the US. We were also um, uh, successful in attracting um, uh, support from the Scottish National Investment Bank as well. Um, and uh, Scottish Enterprise uh, as an investor, as well as University of Strathclyde. So we've, we've had some fantastic um, local institutional support from the government, which has allowed us to, um, to attract private capital from, from, from outside the UK as well. So I think that's a, that's a really good model. And I think with the Scottish National Investment Bank, um, being um, being able to write much larger checks than than typically have been available um, to to startups, that's a, that's a good sign going forward. So I think there's there's a, we have a, a really interesting um, model here, which is you know Scottish enterprise helping taking businesses forward, and we now have the likes of Scottish National Investment Bank that can 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 help um, help uh, provide much bigger checks for for later stage and help businesses scale, so um, long may that continue. So to some extent, the, um, the game we're trying to play here is connect innovators with um, use cases, and really what we want to see is um, you know, that linkage in public sector between you know, academic research and applied innovation. Now, we know that unis are more and more driven by the need to connect those things, but sometimes you need a little bit of help navigating that landscape. And I think one body that you know we are now working with, I think we can we can actually say is quite a standout in terms of su some success is fintech Scotland. So they've just got their silver cluster accreditation for uh, for excellence. I've probably got those words in the wrong order somehow, but um, that's that's a kind of a real vote of confidence in what they've been trying to do. And again, back to the points that both of my panelists of uh, fellow panelists have made they're also connecting into other ecosystems, more um, countrywide selling opportunities, global selling opportunities in, in similar ecosystems in other parts of the world where a problem that we solve here also solves a problem over there. I think just to pick up on that, <coughs> so elsewhere we, we're working with um, publicly funded programs on soft landing, so bringing businesses into the UK and providing um, not only physical space so they land, but all the connectivity into the ecosystem and, and support to get their business registered, get access to contacts, secure finance, and so on. And I think that's a, that's a crucial role that, that the public sector play. Um, I'd say also in skills um, and opening up new uh, pathways into the digital ecosystem as well. Um, so we have a LEP-funded <coughs> program running uh, currently where we're taking uh, kids out of school in 16 to 18 who are just about to drop out of school 
giving them access to corporates and corporate challenges. Uh, again, fun public funded program, but re-energizing those uh, young people, giving them the skills um, so that they go back into the education system and finish their studies. And I think that's an example of, again, you know, intelligent and creative use of uh, public sector funding. Mm -hmm. Wow, I agree. Those are some amazing examples of programs. And I have a specific question for you, Robert. So what role do you think that corporations should play in the innovation ecosystem? Right, so, um, so just to expand on the, on the previous point a little bit. So global organizations um, service in multi-products and multi-countries uh, uh, come across an absolutely sprawling problem landscape and again it goes back to something that you can solve over here quite often scales to be something that can be a global win so we have to be getting out there and putting our problems out to the innovators and connecting with the academics and you know when someone solves a problem that we're interested in we are absolutely paying attention and some way down the line dollars are paying attention to that as well Right on. And that's definitely of great benefit to the local scale-ups in the ecosystem, I'm sure. Okay, so Alan, I know that Strathclyde University was one of your first investors, um, but you weren't an academic spin-out, right? No, no, we were um, at University of Strathclyde. I, I went to University of Strathclyde, so they were one of the first um, people that we went to speak to to say how do you start a business, how do you grow a business and, and they helped us through their, their um, entrepreneurship hub that they have so um, yeah so that's, that's where, amazing. That's how, that's how we got in contact. And I mean uh, just kind of speaking back to some of the findings from the presentation we gave right um, it seems as though the universities in Glasgow really take a hands-on and quite an instrumental role in actually seeding these very early stage startups. Um, so what was that journey like for you, receiving that support early on? I think it's um, the, the role that they played in our, um, in our company was essentially helping signpost. So signpost to the right advisors, um, signpost to the right funding that's available, um, um, and help link in with potential um, academics that might be able to support us on our, on our growth journey. So. Um, we've been able to support um, the, the university in return um, and, and get some support through helping student programs, etc., and, and, and some talent. We've actually, we actually employ quite a lot of uh, University of Strathclyde um, 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 team members. So um, I think uh, that was, that was it, the main kind of experience there. I think it's, you know, the universities have a massive part to play. Um, um, university of Strathclyde have an investment fund as well. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, they're investing not only in, um, in, in spin-out companies, but also in what they call spin-ins now, which is, uh, which is fantastic. So um, I think from my perspective, it's been, really, it's been a really good journey. Hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, so last question we have here. So, I mean, it's clear that we have many of the key ingredients necessary to continue to grow as an ecosystem and really emerge as a powerhouse tech hub on the European and the, the UK scene. Um, but what do you all think is needed to take the ecosystem to the next level? I think one thing we haven't talked about is the importance of engaging the wider community. Um, we're going through the planning process in Cambridge at the moment for redeveloping our park there. And our planner, planning consultant, told us to remove any pictures in our documentation that included anybody with a lap coat because it was deemed to be elitist. And I think when ecosystems become successful, there is a big risk that it creates the haves and those that, that don't benefit in the same way. And I think we're at a stage here in Glasgow, which is exciting that we can engage the broader community without leaving them behind. And there's a huge opportunity, and it's a double, double win, because by engaging that, a diverse community, we get access to a diverse talent pool. <clears throat> talent pool and overcome one of the big breaks to growth. Um, so I think engaging the local community from the outset and making sure we build that into the strategy is really important. I think to kind of follow on that as well is like make sure that the, the tech ecosystem is not um, seen as some elite group of, of uh, companies and people. So we need to try and make it more accessible as well and, and make sure that 
that um, that we can bring people who are maybe not, um, you know, for example, in Code Clan, you've, you've heard a little bit about Code Clan today, and what we do in Code Clan is we take people that haven't got a tech background at all, no coding at all, and we try and bring them in to, you know, skill them up to junior software developing to feed the the the, the demand um, uh, and help with the the supply into into the, the talent pool. So I think we need to make it more accessible. Um, you, know, we, you know, we have a responsibility as as tech founders um, and tech businesses to go back out into the community and, and educate um, and uh, let people know that they have a that they can have a career in tech or in space um, uh, here in Scotland and here in Glasgow. It's incredible. So um, from my perspective, I look fully agree with um, both the points that were just previously made. But the other thing that we also need to be careful, while, while we focus on bringing on um, startups and generating new ideas, we also need to make sure that we actually support the continued growth and that you know, companies that are in Scotland thrive in Scotland because ultimately, um, if you have decision-making centers and headquarters, then you have buyers, um, buyers of future technology that, that we invent here and mo more opportunities to innovate and bring people together. So it's certainly um, just adding the large company perspective. We, we wanna make sure that it's a mature ecosystem isn't just one that's got the top and the bottom, it's also got the, um, the middle as well and the means to connect them. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree. Those are great points. So something I like to do as a last question is to ask, do any of you have questions for each other? You all come from very interesting, different facets of the ecosystem. Is there anything you'd like to ask your fellow panelists? I'd like to ask Jamie um, how um, Bruntwood's SciTech is going to benefit a company like Crucial. Um, um, what, how, how do we... How do we um, how do we get involved? Because um, um, we've obviously we've seen the building. It's uh, it's a big building, um, yeah. fantastic building. But how how do we get involved and, and uh, um, what, how is it going to benefit us? Oh, great question. So um, as we were just actually saying before, we were we were hiding backstage. Um, we've we've acquired the building. That's the Met Tower building. For those of you who are not aware, just in uh, the centre of of the city. Uh, we're going through a major process of refurbishment, um, and it will be launched at the end of 2024. Um, in terms of getting involved, uh, we'd love you to get involved. Um, what we're doing between now and then, we're starting to engage with the, the local ecosystem here. Um, our objective is really to support the ecosystem. We don't want to compete in any way with what anybody's doing. Um, and so it's, it's engaging with the various programs, initiatives, skills development, finance, um, all, the, all the market access and, uh, work that's going on, um, and, and start to help forge networks and the community, because I think <coughs> certainly in conversations we had, there's, there's a need for, for uh, greater linkages you know, between the different parts um, of the ecosystem, and if we can help uh, in galvanizing that. When we actually have physical space and we're live, um, the top floor is, is going to be a tech lounge and uh, conferencing space and event space. Uh, and that will be for the, the wider ecosystem. It won't be just exclusive for uh, people who take space in the building. Uh, so we really want it to be a center, um, not an exclusive center, but a center for the, for the, the tech ecosystem. And, and we want to do whatever we can to help facilitate and, and grow that ecosystem. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to actually ask both um, fellow panelists. Um, so large companies, traditionally quite difficult to sell into and navigate. Um, and in our case, we're certainly heavily, heavily regulated businesses. So on that basis, you know, a lot of our sectors try to make changes to become better, more accommodating and easier to reach. But how much further do we need to go? What else do we need to do to better support you? Great question. I mean, I'd love to sell our product into Morgan Stanley and the, and the <laughs> likes. Um, 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 I think it make, making it easier for us to um, for uh, for our, for for large corporates to to take risk in procurement, um, you know, and um, you know, from a governance perspective, make it very simple to to place a contract on a smaller smaller business. Because obviously, from a corporate perspective, there's risk in placing a contract with a small business that may go out of business at some point in time. So, um, you know, 
make it easier from that perspective to, to place small contracts to then work with the, 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 the startups to you know, take them on a journey and help them solve the problems. Um, you know, that, that accessibility is, is really important. So yeah, navigating corporates is, is extremely hard, extremely difficult, but as you say, we've got lots of large corporates here in, in Scotland. I'd rather it's, be doing it's business. It's even hard within the corporate. Yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> I'm, sure yeah. it is. <laughs> I'm sure it is. It's, it's interesting, we're running a program uh, in Birmingham with BMP at the moment, Paribas. Um, and it's a challenge-led program, so we, they, they set three challenges. Um, we then obviously went out to the ecosystem in Birmingham and said, please respond to the challenges. Um, what's been interesting is what they've been looking for, is exactly as you say, is how to navigate the procurement process in a large financial services institution. And they've been really good, actually, and they've uh, run a series of workshops to explain you know, the, the A to Z of the process. Um, and the second thing they've offered to do, which is really interesting, is, is open up their corporate relationships as well, because they, they obviously are heavily networked um, with other corporates and, and facilitate some of those introductions. So I think being able to engage with early stage businesses through challenges to help solve your problems, and then not necessarily buying their stuff, but um, help giving them the credibility that they've worked with you, and, um, and then also helping them navigate you know, your, um, your fellow corporates, it will be hugely valuable. So that is all the time we have, unfortunately, but I am so glad that we got that chance to ask those last few questions because maybe those are the most valuable uh, considering we are here to talk about how we as an ecosystem can collaborate, work together, build relationships to drive the ecosystem forward. So with that, let's say thank you to the panelists and thank you so much for coming.